welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome and welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness. Um, I have to use this microphone. My other microphone broke. <laughs> so until I figure out what I'm going to purchase, I'm going to use my all aboard and I'm going to invite everyone to drop into their heart space right now and just kind of feel how you are feeling. Notice how you're feeling feel what you're feeling. That's one of the biggest messages that's always coming up with my team. Also recognizing that this month, I'm sharing this video in the month of August. This is actually, I'm recording this on 8-8. Eight, eight. eight is one of my favorite, most synchronistic numbers, eights and fours. And, um, you know, it represents a lot of things in these spiritual communities or um, just communities in general that talk about uh, these portals and these activation moments in, in time. I see things as nodes and node points that line up on a map in our matrix of reality. But the biggest message that comes through about this is it's really all about where we are aligning our focus, where we are giving or paying or uh, giving our attention to. And they've proven in heart math and I've talked about this before with heart centered focus and coherence through meditation when everybody is doing it at the same time it creates this massive ripple effect and it's very quantum it is something that we are always doing but what happens is we are so scattered with our energies sometimes that many of the things we focus on become less potent because when we come together when two or more gather through that higher frequency of heart-centered uh, coherence, right? That crystal opens up and crystallizes in this plasmatic way of a synchronization with each other's energies. And we collaborate, co-create, and come together and interweave in this reality structure that, that allows us to create and collaborate on reality's structure. We're coming into oneness about we're making decisions about what we want the future to look like. We're making decisions about how we want to connect with one another, what we want the future of travel to look like, how we want to show up on the earth and how we want to treat our environment. And when we do this in a very heart centered way, again, I invite you to go to heartmath.org, it becomes cohesive. And what's happened over the course of many years is many of us have been pulled apart. We haven't felt cohesive within our own center. We haven't necessarily been able to align with what our purpose says or what we feel is most resonant or harmonic with what we want to co-create. Many of us have been locked into creating things for reasons that are not necessarily the true reason for being here. And that time has come to a completion for many people. And many people are starting to, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but here we go. Um, many people are starting to look outside of where the box has been that they've been co-creating from or within. And they're starting to ask questions. They're starting to wonder, how can I uh, try something new is it possible what does that look like it can be uncomfortable and very scary for us to do that and so um we're really being encouraged to allow ourselves to co-create in a in a very different way than we're used to co-creating and it really comes back to us not being linear not overthinking and over analyzing how we're going to take the ne next step what it's going to look like, um, how long it's going to take. However, the encouragement that I get from the guides, and this has been coming up a lot in session as well, is to, once we find that space, and I did a video about this called the parentheses, once we find that space and we co-create from that holding of our own energy, and we continuously come back and ask ourselves, where am I creating from? Where is my bliss? How do I feel about this? What would I like to see as an overall energetic um, feeling or component or outcome? Now, so that means it's not that we're not creating. It's not that we're putting everything on pause and we're waiting for things to come to us. 
we're actively seeking from inside of us that which we are seeking. So we begin to look out from our new landscape, which is no longer a box, it's this beautiful star. And we begin to see different points in our structure of reality. And when we focus on those focal points and we allow ourselves to align with that, which we see here from the projector of here, those work together to stream out, we begin to coordinate new coordinates. We begin to create a new map that unfolds around us in a very organic and streamlined way that has less uh, straight lines. Although from another perspective, it's already here now. So of course we have that law of attraction, but it, it doesn't work how it used to work because we're not in the same linearity that we were once used, we, we used to play in. We're playing in a whole different octave, a whole different vibration, a whole different frequency of sound, a whole different world. So we're all making those adjustments as we learn how to operate in this new dynamic, in this new dynamic way. So that was one of the big messages I wanted to convey. A little bit of rhyme here. Uh, the energies that we're used to connecting into, it's not that we still don't have the same pieces or the same game pieces to play with. I'm getting a picture in my mind's eye of uh, when you're a kid and you have your favorite game that you used to play and then you start a new game and you might carry over some of those pieces because you don't really want to play the old game, but you want to utilize those same characters, right? So you carry them over into the new game and all of a sudden Barbie is playing with My Little Pony or Barbie and My Little Pony are playing with the trolls or I'm just sharing that these little toys that we carry over from our childhood Let's utilize that as an analogy. What pieces do we want to take with us that would be fun to still have as part of our package? That we're not necessarily, we don't have to leave it all behind. But the way in which we're interacting with our new toys, our new reality has shifted. And so some of us are looking back at that old game longingly because we were familiar with it. <laughs> we felt good knowing where the characters were going to go and working from, I'm seeing like a Monopoly or something. I'm not seeing Monopoly, I'm seeing another game, but you get my, you get where I'm going with this, I hope. And what happens is this, this creates a sense of a little bit of a forlorn feeling because some people are in, I, I've mentioned this before, a little bit of a longing for the past. You know, there's a little bit of, uh, what is it called when people are Rem they reminisce and some people are stuck in that reminiscing because it's too uncomfortable to completely take everything over to this new area or even bridge it together and for those who are in that space this might be a very difficult time for them and most of you who are watching this video are not you're either a bridge or you're already in this higher vibration or you're you're starting to ask these questions which is why you found this video and so what my guides are sharing is, you know, the easiest answer is let it go. But how do we let it go? And what does that look like? And if we're used to operating from a very logical and cerebral and a kind of a, a masculine energy to embrace this new feminine um, dance is is can be challenging. And this isn't a male female thing this is an energetic component of left and right brain harmonization synchronization of that masculine energy logical strength that has this way of getting things done taking action and then that feminine quality which just represents a softer more creative energy or right brain i hope i'm not mixing that up energetic that we are starting to sync up with more often we're starting to desire that flow and it feels like, whoa, why do I want that? No, 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 no. Stay on track. Keep, keep things here. We got to focus on the, and vice versa. Some people who have been unable to, to get into that left brain analytical, get things done. 
Sometimes this can be even more challenging because the energies that are coming in are offering even more fluidity. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, we might find ourselves going, I don't know how to combine this frequency. I feel like I need to take action. I feel like I need to be doing something, but I'm so used to operating in flow. And there, there comes this time when we might start to second guess being in that flow. But what I'm seeing is that that logical analytical energy, if we just allow it to flow, will begin to coordinate with us easier once we learn how to relax. And that's part of the challenge of this because many people aren't used to relaxing. I brought this up in a previous video that I didn't realize my body was holding so much tension until I had my first cranial sacral therapy session. And felt everything just kind of soften, even my jaw, my neck, everything. And I thought, have I ever felt this relaxed? Have I always been holding on and just didn't realize it? And mind you, this was after I was already a yoga teacher. I had already been teaching others how to relax. I had been teaching meditation. I had been teaching breath work. I had been talking about, I was even at this stage, a Reiki practitioner. So I'd gone through my Reiki certification. So it was a big wake up call for, for myself. And I had, had to realize, wow, this is a whole other layer that was, that was lifted that I didn't even realize was there. And that's what's happening for a lot of us is this other layer has now been lifted and we're able to kind of calibrate or connect the dots in a more harmonious way that feels less harmonious for some because we're not used to it. We don't really understand it. We don't really know how to interact with it. And this can create some disorientation, disorganization, and a feeling of uh, feeling a little off kilter. And this is where I come back to the previous video that my guides keep saying, get in the parentheses allow the variables to kind of reconstruct around us while still focusing with intention from the heart centered awareness of what we feel into that we may want to explore the other um message that's coming through based on sessions i've been having this is a, a, a sync uh, when i have a lot of similarities with questions or similarities in um things others are experiencing or, or wondering about, I recognize, okay, this isn't something that's going on for more than just one person. So it's happening for a lot of people. And the biggest message is be curious. Um, I think I've told several people this one's just in the last week, but be curious because what I'm seeing for multiple people is they're starting to question things they wouldn't have questioned before. They're starting to feel something they didn't feel before. And that feeling might be confusion. That feeling might be doubt. If we can take that and slightly shift it or transmute it or alchemize it or feel it and then ask, where is this feeling coming from? And also, in addition to that, what would I like, what feeling would I like to come in to this? Now, once I've dissolved that and it's leaving the space for me to be curious, asking ourselves, what would that feel like if I tried this or if I went to this location or I went on a date with that person or I put myself out there? And if it feels scary, sit with that for a moment. And we can then come back to that and say, why would it feel scary? Where is this fear coming from? And oftentimes we find that the fear is coming from our own um, self stuff, right? Our own lack of self-worth or, or our own insecurities or a feeling of a failure. What if I fail? And what I can share from a quantum perspective is failure is just a term that we've used to categorize a linear pre presentation of what has, has yet to be fulfilled or wasn't fulfilled based on a story or a program that we told ourselves we needed to complete. Most of the time, these failures are not really true. There's something that we have created. 
And so we start to ask ourselves, what is it within me that still desires this outcome? And we might realize that what we wanted no longer is desirable to us. Because our desires, if we're working on this in the best possible way, are coming from here now, rather than just the mental, logical, must do this to accomplish that. Because part of the message that always comes through and has for years is this is all about the journey. So in those synchronicities that we follow, that is what allows us to feel and to unfold into a slightly different trajectory. It will take us into a store we wouldn't have gone into before, to have that conversation we wouldn't have had before, to smell those flowers that we wouldn't have smelled before. I'm just picturing someone going into like a flower shop and buying some flowers and then having a beautiful conversation with the receptionist and, and then taking that energy with them into their next adventure which allows them to hold that presence, to hold that frequency, to hold that bliss, to hold that charge that may not have taken them into the next place before. So as you take that charge with you of feeling into these moments throughout the day, it carries us forward in a much more fluid way. We become more aware of our environment. We become more aware of our interactions with that environment and that entire interaction is what changes our perspective on our reality and as we change our perspective on reality we change our perspectives we change our prospects our prospects we change what it is that we are prospecting for we shift into and move through a different door which gives us a new opportunity to fine tune what it is we are looking for to fine tune and find a new tune that gives us an access to another door, right? And we keep getting these keys that we can use at any time whenever we're ready. And the, the idea is that we're always ready because we're in the now moment. And so that key becomes, just shows up for us. Ring, here it is. Oh, I didn't even realize that was there. I wonder what this is for. So we start to see things differently. And as we interact with what we're seeing differently, we see things differently. We see different things. So we begin to recognize that person on the street that catches our eye because they're wearing a t-shirt with a butterfly on it. We see that butterfly then when we're walking and it makes us think of a loved one that passed away. And then it brings up a memory of the loved one that we had the connection with and it makes us feel happy or it makes us feel sad. And then we realize we send love to that person and that shifts our frequency and vibration. We integrate that emotion. We feel that emotion. And then when we go and go for a walk on the street, we meet someone who just lost a loved one. We can tap into that and say, I, I'm sorry for your loss. I, I love you. I feel your, I've, I've been there and I can't replace that person. Can I give you a hug? Or maybe it's just holding space and not touching the person, but just emotionally, energetically holding space for them so they can talk about what they're feeling or not talk about what they're feeling. This is a, and I'm using that as an example, right? It might be that that butterfly leads to you having a conversation with someone else about a butterfly and both of you going, wow, that's so synchronistic. I can't believe you saw a t-shirt. I just saw a license plate that said butterfly in it. That's so weird. And that's how it all starts for some, someone who's just beginning on the path, right? The butter, I, I'm not, I'm using butterfly as an example. For me, it was all kinds of things. It just opened up all at once. And I, the whole universe was talking to me, which can be a little overwhelming, but we're all interacting differently then. And we become more aware of our interactions. We become more aware of the importance of our interactions. And when I say interactions, it's interactions, right? We begin to act from that inner space, understanding of a frequency that ne wasn't necessarily as, I, I, I don't want to say as accessible, but the more we use it, it's just like a muscle, the more accessible it becomes. So it becomes a habit, it becomes a habit, what we're wearing, right? A habit that you wear when you're riding a horse. It becomes something that we put on on a regular basis from our own 
um, while I'm hearing integrity, humility, and authenticity, it just, that's, that's who we, who we are. That's how we interact with one another. And if all of us were doing that on a regular basis, we wouldn't be interacting from a place that was not really who we really were. And I, I say interacting. So a lot of people are interacting. They're entering into the field outside of them and they're acting as if, you know, they're in that reality. When we come back into interacting, we begin to take action and act out, speak from that inner place of knowing. And it becomes a deeper interaction with everything. And we begin to then take action from that space. This has to do with kundalini. This has to do with heart coherence. This has to do with the glandular um, activations that are happening in the body. It has to do with how the synapses in our brain start to fire differently. It has to do with how we, all of this is connected. And it starts with just breathing, starts with being aware, starts with us centering ourselves before we walk into that store, before we step into that office. And it becomes, again, I'm hearing less reactionary, more interactionary. And these, it then creates more value in this social connection with each other, which ripples out and creates more value with how we socially connect with one another and how we treat one another. And when we're treating each other with something that isn't mm, built from chaos and all of the insecurities that many people have been acting out because they don't realize, oh, why did I say that? Where did that come from? Because it was something that hadn't been integrated. It was something we projected from here rather than from here. We were using and enacting out someone else's projector. It was reflecting, bouncing off of us, and we reflected it back to them because we reacted instead of going within and recognizing that that person was upset and it had nothing to do with us. So rather than us getting angry and then reflecting that back to them, we, we hold space and we go, wow, that person's really angry. I, I can feel that, you know, not being triggered and then not doing the triggering. And if everybody wasn't triggering each other, I'm hearing trigger happy, we would just dissolve the trigger and it would be just happy, <laughs> happy. Um, and this takes work, takes practice, and we're all learning together how we are co-creating this together. So that was the message that's coming through for today. Um, and there's so much more that wants to come through. Uh, I guess I'm going to go back to that. So once we walk through those doors of synchronicity and once we realize that we are all, and by the way, when I speak, I'm sharing this, I'm seeing pictures and I, what I share has a quantum energetic behind it. So sometimes I might be saying things that kind of makes sense, but it doesn't really. Other times people sink right in and, and see what I'm saying. We're also being called to listen. Because again, I always talk about the sound behind the sound. There are other sounds that we haven't been paying attention to. And that sound is a frequency. So there are frequencies we haven't been paying attention to. It's an energetic feeling. It's an energetic sensation. And so while there's a lot of going on that is sensationalism, we're being called to come back to those parentheses, which I'll, I'll post the link to that video below if you feel called to um, and to, to check it out. We are being called to come back to that energetic stability that is our own center of know thyself. And then we have a greater impact on the in entire experience that is unfolding around us because we show up with more authority not from a place of ego, insecurity, power, the need to control, which I talked about in a previous video with the whiteboard behind me. But instead, we come from a place of in secure it. We are in, we are secure in who we are. And even if we have moments of fear, trepidation, or we're not really sure, 
we don't get sucked into that fear and we don't get pulled into other people's stories or conversations that feeds the fear. We are held within a space of feeling. We recognize it and we, we go, hmm, I feel a little fearful right now or I'm not sure what I'm feeling, but I can sense, I can hear what's going on through this feeling, but that isn't a conversation I want to participate in because it's pulling me out of my own sense of centeredness. I was going to say bliss or joy, but sometimes just being in a space of coherence doesn't mean we're in a place of sunshine, rainbows, everything is magical. Granted, we can be in those places too. In this particular reality, most of us are bridges between that. So we don't hold that all of the time necessarily. Some people do, some people don't. I oscillate because from my perspective, I like to sense it all. I like, I like the, 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 um, flavors and I like to recognize what I'm feeling. And so it's not to say that somebody who's in bliss doesn't recognize that. That's what they're choosing to carry. And if they can be in that space consistently, it's a beautiful thing. That is contagious. And if you're that person, awesome. Thank you for bringing that bliss into this field and into this space and sharing it with us. Because there are moments when I am not feeling sunshine and rainbows. I'm experiencing uh, grief. I'm experiencing worry because of a loved one. I'm experiencing or feeling sadness because I can't necessarily help someone I love in the way I would like to. And then I experience my own frustration and my own insecurities, which I'm constantly working on. That's what I do, what I've done doesn't mean I'm always going to do that. You know, someday I might get to a point where that isn't part of my reality, but it is for now. So for those of you who can carry that, that's amazing. And it gives others an opportunity to see that that is possible. Even if they can't feel it in the moment, or let me rephrase that, just because we can't feel that bliss charge, it doesn't mean that it isn't still contagious. When we carry with us, when we activate something within ourselves, we activate others. We are a living biological uh, human collective of, of energy conduct, conductors, trans, uh, transformers. We are conduits and we share this energy whether we like it or not. Um, it is part of our own human template and technology. We go to a baseball game or a football game and when everybody's doing the wave and everybody gets excited, we feel it. That's what I'm referring to. So it's no different when you walk into a room and everybody's having a bad day. We may not consciously recognize that we're picking up on it, but we are. And me, maybe we, we walk through a room and I'm being called to share this. <laughs> it's going to be a little longer than I thought because a lot of people are doing this. You might walk into a room and have, uh, you might start yawning. Has anybody done this? You might all of a sudden just be tired. And when you're yawning, you're releasing energy. You're moving energy. I tend to yawn or as those of you who know have done sessions with me, I burp. It's just the way that my body releases that energy, much like the earth. She burps, <laughs> geysers blow up, the earth shakes. Um, sometimes we all of a sudden want to rub our hands together. Sometimes I do that. I do, I do this a lot with my fingers. Um, we're pulling that energy that's in the field and we're doing something different with it and we're alchemizing it. We're shifting it from one thing into something else. We are that. We are capable of that. So I'm not taking that away from them or telling them they shouldn't be feeling that way or saying, you guys are all a bunch of grumpy pants, cheer up. Granted, I have done that in the past. And in some cases, that is the right thing to do. But sometimes I can just sense it. And just by me showing up and transmuting that within my own body and my own template, 
all of a sudden it's contagious. People start to go, huh, I feel a little bit better. I don't know why. We don't have to take credit for it. And we don't even have to know that we're doing that, but we are. The other thing to recognize, um, or if you've ever been working with someone and you start coughing, you know, oh my goodness, something. So it may be that they have something going on that they want to share or that they can't share. And we're picking up on that. Um, for some people, it's tension in the head. We feel heavy. So there's all kinds of ways of moving this energy around. And we're all beginning to turn that on uh, in one way or another. And when we turn that on, we turn on certain templates and connective points in our body that is literally transmitted into the field around us. The field that's around us isn't solid. Our bodies aren't. Everything is a frequency. It's it's moving. Um, and so we begin to move in a different vibration. And that is, um, uh, I'm being called to remind everybody to look up cymatics, C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S. So I think I'm going to end on that note and just, that was kind of the update for now. So recognizing how we're showing up, realizing that things are changing, even though it feels sometimes as if they aren't, recognizing that things are going to look different uh, for all of us. And the way in which we interact is different for all of us. So I'm going to end on that note and send out a little gratitude for everybody who's tuning into this video in love and light. Happy Lions Month and namaste.